What is a thick in E shape and how to secure it? Ethic is an important notion in European funding projects. For all activities funded by the EC, ethics is an integral part of research from beginning to end. Ethical compliance is seen as pivotal to achieve a real research excellence. Ethic is a multifaceted concept and it is covered by various legal texts that you can see here. By signing the grant agreement, each partner is committed to ensure strict compliance to the ethics principle. To support the partners, the, co the coordination sets up an ethics and data protection team who designed the e-shape tools and wrote ethics deliverables. Tools will be presented in uh, the course of this presentation. Tools and principles should be followed by each partner. The ethics and personal data protection team is Anne de Moisy, external advisor, Thierry Ranchin, eShape Scientific Coordinator, Mathieu Reboul, Administrative Financial and Contractual Manager, myself, Anne-Laure Godia, Armin's DPO, and Rashida Ben Said, DPO Trainee. Three types of ethic issues have been identified by the ethic reviewer from the EC. Human participation, personal data protection, and participation of third countries. They gave conditional ethics clearance for eShape. For each of these issues, EC required the elaboration of a deliverable. These deliverables are all published in Confluence and are a useful source of information. The first ethics issue is human participation in eShape. Well, some people external to eShape Consortium are involved or take actively part in some e-shape task. So where is human participation in e-shape? Well, mostly in co-design activities with user communities or with specialized experts. And also in capacity buildings activities. For example, in workshops, webinar, user uptake meeting, and face-to-face -face training. A compliant human participation means that you have to get, before any participation, an informed consent. The consent must be given by someone of legal age, must be fully understood and be given without any pressure or moral coercion. It must be informed so you have to give precise information about that. And it must be given in writing because you have to keep evidence of the existence of the consent. So you have to collect via the signature of um, detailed information sheet and an informed consent form the expression of the consent of the participant. Based on the ethic questionnaire we sent in September, it seems that you have yet not used or developed such forms. You will find a template of an e-shape information sheet or a template of a consent form 
in deliverable D7.1 income fluence. Use them as a support. They have been designed to be adapted by yourself to your specific case and there is a checklist to secure the adaptation of the templates. Don't forget that these templates must be translated to your participant language to be fully understood. Use them before starting any activity with a participant. The second ethics issue is personal data protection. Since 2080, the collection and processing of personal data should comply with the General Data Protection Regulation GDPR, to ensure that the privacy of the individual providing the data is respected. Strict compliance is expected from each partner. You are dealing with personal data in eShape and you are therefore subject to strict legal obligation. And you must be able to demonstrate at any time that you are compliant. Personal data is information that relates to identified or identifiable individual. You have there the legal definition. That you have to remain is that identification can be carried out from a single piece of data for example, obviously a name, but also from a crossing of a set of data, we may not be by itself personal data. Take an example, a woman living in a specific town associated with her date of birth. Gender, tone or date of birth are not personal data in themselves, but put together they can lead to the identification of this person and therefore they are personal data. So what is personal data in eShape? Well, name, email, phone number, recording of voice, picture, way of life or localization data, IP address, logs password, cookies, pseudonymized data. Pseudonymized data is still a personal data. Only information which is truly anonymous is deemed as not being personal data. Anonymization makes it impossible to identify the person by any means at all and in an irreversible manner. In pseudonymization, some people can, at some point, be able to identify someone. In anonymization, identification is forever impossible. There are two general techniques of anonymization. Randomization that is, techniques that alter the veracity of data in order to remove the strong link between the data and the individual. And generalization, techniques that generalize or dilute the attributes of the people by modifying the respective scales or order of magnitude. The other main concept of GDPR is processing. Processing means any operation or set of operations which is performed on personal data, whether or not by automated means. And you have there the list of what can be a processing. Uh, Handwritten file can be 
the processing. And processing is wider than collecting. If you are not collecting personal data, if you receive them from someone else and use them, you are still processing them. And all data must be protected when they are processed. Well, the protection have eight golden rules. The first one is to have a lawful process. In order to be lawful, personal data should be processed on legally defined basis. In each shape, there are two. The most important one is consent. The person gave an explicit positive consent to the processing. That means that he must have formally say or write yes to the processing. Another legal basis can be your legitimate interest. Strict conditions apply to this basis. In that case, the data processing should be necessary for an identified purpose serving a legitimate interest and this is very important and this interest must be balanced with people rights for example using the professional email of someone in a professional context can be based on your legitimate interest but using the personal email of someone in a professional context can be analyzed as an evasion of privacy and you can't in that case based your processing on legitimate interest e-shape consent form template in deliverable d7.1 as a dedicated personal data section. The second rule is transparency, that means full information. Data subjects must be informed of each processing details and purposes. One processing can have several purposes. To help you to give the, a full and accurate information, e-shape checklist and e-shape informed consent form cover personal data issues. You have to understand that you have to define the purpose of the processing and it must be defined with accuracy. It can't be something too general. Beware reuse of the data in other further processing. If you want to use the data for other research project, you must inform the data subject and collect his or her consent. You have also to think of data minimization. That means that you have to collect, you must collect just the strictly necessary data to fit the purpose. Always challenge yourself. Do I need this specific personal information for the identified purpose? If yes, can I anonymize it? Well, do not collect data only because this is a good opportunity to enrich your personal database. There is a special type of data which is sensitive data. The principle is um, that processing of the following uh, personal data is prohibited. Data revealing racial or ethnic origin, political or religious opinion, genetic data, 
biometric data, data concerning health, or data concerning sexuality. The exception is that the processing is allowed when the person gave an explicit consent to this processing, and the processing will be subject to stronger protection measure and legal justification. If you use data concerning health in e-shape, I think the best is to refer to your data privacy officer. You have them to organize the effectiveness of the right of the individuals. Rights in eShape are right to access and to rectify the personal data and right to oppose to the processing. In practice, that means that data subjects must know who to contact to exercise their rights. And this contact person must know what to do. Internal process and tools to allow the exercise of rights must be implemented before and you have to know how to rectify or delete the personal data in all files or system in which they appear. You must also secure the data at every step of the data life cycle collection or reception, use, analyze, as access, transfer, reuse, storage. There are several types of security measure. Physical security measure, as clamping down on malicious software or backup security. Logical security measures, like um, attributing user profiles, securing archive, and organizational security measures. For example, the existence of a process that can detect and treat incidents that may affect the data subject's privacy. A checklist of various possible security measures was provided in the risk assessment form. You can find it in Confluence. Deliverable Day 7.3 covering these security issues can be consulted in Confluence. The last golden rule is privacy by design. It consists in considering privacy and data protection issues at the design phase of any system or services and then throughout the life cycle. In practice, personal data protection issues must be part of the design and implementation of systems, service, um, products and so on, and an essential component of the core functionality of the processing system and services. Risks and privacy in these events must be anticipated before they occur, and appropriate action must be implemented to avoid and or reduce them. In eShape, in some cases, personal data can be transferred to non-EU countries. These transfers must provide a sufficient and appropriate level of data protection. It means that, it means that when transferring personal data to um, a non-EU country, you must put in place binding measures to ensure an adequate level of protection. Well, some non-EU countries are deemed to have a level of protection equivalent to the European one, while well, Switzerland, for example. 
to help you, eShape Consortium Agreement provides template of clauses for transfers. Deliverable Day 7.2, covering these issues, is income fluence. You may also be in the case of collection and processing of personal data in an EU country. You must be aware in that case and you must re respect the national laws you must ensure a sufficient and appropriate level of data protection in all cases, even if there is not a law related to uh, personal data protection, you have a kind of self-compliance that you have to enforce. To help you in all this matter, and to help you to assess your personal data processing and document the compliance, we suggest you to use a small free software. The French Personal Data Authority, the CNIL, has designed a multilingual user-friendly software. It presents a step-by-step -step method to check that in practice, the processing complies with all these golden rules. And you are invited to a demonstration this afternoon, breakout session 4. The last ethic issue is in involvement of non-EU countries. Deliverable 7.4 gives detailed information to demonstrate that fair benefit sharing arrangements with stakeholders from low and lower middle income countries are ensured and will be provided. Well, thank you for your attention, especially at lunchtime. Well, hello all. I just would like to know if you have any question after this presentation. Well, so, okay, and I hope to have, well, um, I hope you will come this afternoon to see a presentation of the CNIL tool to help you um, in all these compliance matters.